Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Hello. Hello. Can Hello, you hear me? Here. Yes, I, I can. And you? I can. can. You hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. I thought that I have problems with my computer. Oh. Yes, because oh. I've been speaking and no one answered so I was like is everything okay or is my computer not working oh I, I was sleepy <laughs> I just wake up in this moment oh I, I, a, a long day. I was very busy and tired I want to sleep just a little by sleep almost 30 minutes okay but that's really good because you can sleep for a while and then you wake up if i do that i will wake up until the next day oh really yeah so if i have to do something i'd rather do it even if i'm sleepy because I know that if I go to bed and I say I'm going to do it later, um, I won't because I will fall asleep and no one will wake me up. You are tired because your baby may be uh, absorbing much tiempo, your energy. Yeah, it could be. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. Hi, good evening. Yeah. Uh, good evening, teacher. How was your weekend, your long weekend? Uh, very, very cold. <laughs> really? 
And why was that? Really very, very cold. <laughs> y más porque hoy la clase la voy a recibir en el exterior de mi casa. <laughs> and, and where do you live, Jaime? Uh, sorry? Where do you live? Uh, I live in Mexicanos. Ah, Mexicanos. Uh, sí, acá está haciendo un frío horrible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went to visit my family and they live in San Marcos. And that, well, there is really, really cold. Uh, the baby and I almost froze because it was so cold. I suppose it uh, will, will be in this place. <laughs> Yeah, right now, because I'm inside the house, I don't feel anything, but it might be cold outside. I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, it is cold. Yes. Está haciendo frío, en verdad. Y bastante. Aún adentro de las casas, creo que es el cierto. Ah, pues quizás por, por el café que me acabo de tomar es que yo tengo calor. A lo mejor. Yo porque a rato me lo tomé. No, I'm, I'm a coffee lover. I, I really love coffee. Me too. Me here, too. It, here is cold. Here in next to Cojutepeque. Oh, it's really cold. Oh my God. I imagine that. When I took a shower this morning, oof, I, I, it, it was terrific. Oh my God. Yeah, when it's really cold, it's like you think twice if you should take a shower or not. Yeah. It's a very, very difficult decision to do it. I know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, good evening for the others. How was your long weekend? Oops. Okay, so probably they are shy right now. They don't want to talk to us. Okay. Okay, and tell me, uh, did you finish working on the platform? Yes, I did. Excellent. Yes. And did you have any um, any hurdle or anything that was really difficult for you? In the final exam, the part of the address. Ah. ah. It, it was really, really difficult. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't find um, Green Park, something like that. I didn't find it. Okay. También en, eh, eh, también en español me pierdo. <laughs> Más en inglés todavía. <laughs> yeah. So, me too, believe me that. I'm really bad with directions. And if people ask me where is the, for example, the hospital, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, last week, I think someone asked me, "Do you know where is the? Where are some stores?" And I was here like, uh, "No, I have no idea," because honestly, I don't go outside the house. I'm just inside with my baby. So if they ask me for stores or people who live around, um, I have no idea. So, so sorry. I always, always uh, ask people, where is that place? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know too. <laughs> okay. I, oh, siempre estoy perdida. Me too. Okay. Um, hi, good evening. Hey, Josue, Mauricio, Erika, and Brian. Sara, good evening. Good evening, teacher. 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 Good evening, teacher.
teacher. Good evening. How was your weekend? Tell me. My weekend, uh, pues la pasé working, <laughs> la pasé trabajando. <laughs> okay. So you were working. Yes. And what Yo, do you do, Kay? Ah, mi teacher. Yo guardadita en el hospital. Oh hospital. You were at the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. But are you better now? Repeat. Yes. Are you better now? Do you feel better? I don't know, teacher. ¿Se siente ya mejor? Sí, mejor. Okay. Yes, good. Excellent. Good. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome, Sara. Okay. Um, I was asking you if you completed the platform, and if so, what are the questions that you have before I continue? explaining the last topic or the last section that we have that is the simple pass of the verb to be. Uh, can you tell me if there is any question that you may have? Eh, teacher pregunta cómo, cómo estamos con la plataforma. Sí. Eh, yo he ido avanzando pero estoy todavía pendiente con unos ejercicios que sí me han costado mucho, mucho, pero espero pues terminarlos este día, primero Dios en la noche. Ok, no se preocupe. Gracias. Sí. Igual yo estoy pendiente con unos de que hay que subir de, de voz, este, <coughs> más que todo porque han dado en, eh, en vuelta de, de, de ver un, un, un trabajito, entonces este, pues... Eh, esos son los que no me han quedado chance de hacer, pero en esta semana creería yo que lo voy a solventar. A más tardar el jueves creería yo que ya van a estar ya subidos en sus respectivas high discussion. Ok, excelente. De ahí todo está hecho, creo yo. Perfecto. Uh, yo voy, bueno, creo que voy exacta, creo que a empezar las 5, pero... Como me tocó trabajar todo el fin de semana, <risa> este, eh, no, no recuerdo ni por dónde voy, en serio. Voy bien desconectada, perdón, ese día para mí es bien pesado. Pero ahora aquí estamos. Ok, no era problem, Kate, thank you. Sí, acuérdense que ya esta es nuestra última semana y ya el viernes estaríamos terminando, ¿verdad? Con el final exam. Para los que ya lo hicieron, pues felicidades, me, me parece, ¿verdad? se le ve ese compromiso con lo que es el idioma. Créanme que el idioma inglés es un idioma súper bonito y como les decía, ¿verdad? es mucho más fácil que el español. ¿Por qué? Porque ya vimos que en pasado simple el verbo es el mismo para todos, no nos cambia como en español, que tenemos que conjugarlo pues, para primera persona, segunda persona, que si es singular o que si es plural y todo eso. Y en cambio en inglés, lo único quizás que a veces nos puede dificultar es la pronunciación. Pero de ahí todo es súper fácil. Ok, so I'm going to begin. We are going to begin with the section five. And... For the ones that haven't gotten at it yet, we are going to begin basically with affirmative and negative statements using the simple path of the verb to be. Vaya, este, vamos a estar viendo lo que es el pasado simple del verbo to be. Ya nosotros, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos que el pasado simple del verbo to be es was and were. Ahora lo único que tenemos que saber es cuándo vamos a estarlo usando. Okay, so probably I'm going to begin making a review of the verb to be in simple present. Okay, so then we can see the information or the difference that we have with the auxiliary verb that we use. Okay, um, first of all, as you know, we have the verb to be that means ser, estar, o parecer. Okay, and I have the following question. Do you know when am I going to use each of them? 
¿Saben cuándo voy a usar cada uno de ellos? Es decir, ser o estar. No. In question, teacher, or... I mean, afirmative. Yes, cuando do quiera you... referirme a, a algo que ya pasó, a algo que, que, que ya lo realicé, no sé, o que ya estuve en ese lugar, no sé. Ok. Just give me a few seconds. I want to share something with you. Ok, here it is. So this is just a review that I'm going to be working with you right now about the verb to be. Um, you're going to see it like this, but this is in simple present, okay? Then we are going to make the relationship within the simple present and the simple past, okay? And as I was saying to you, first of all, we have the verb to be that in Spanish means ser, or estar, okay? And I'm going to use the verb ser when I'm talking about permanent situations. And I'm going to use estar when I'm talking about transitory situations. So my question is, what are permanent situations for you? Mi pregunta, ¿qué son las situaciones permanentes para ustedes? For example, I'm married. It's permanent because I married for all my life. Ah, okay. But what if I get divorced? No existe esa palabra. Ah. No debería existir. Yeah, I know because it is supposed that when you choose a person, it's for the rest of your life. But nowadays, you know okay. that you choose someone and then you realize that the person was not what you expected. And that's why some people get divorced. Okay. Thank you. Para ustedes, ¿qué son las situaciones permanentes? Oh, like a, a, a profession. You are, you are teacher. You okay. always to be a teacher. Okay. Thank Even you. You are teaching or no. <laughs> Excellent. I really like that example. Okay. And what is a transitory situation? Que es una situación transitoria. Uh, maybe when I say I was late today. Okay. Because I expect, I hope only this day, today, not tomorrow, ni other day. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to see some of the uses of the verb to be. Okay, vamos a ver algunos de los usos del verbo to be. Y ustedes me tienen que decir si es para una situación permanen, permanente o si es una situación transitoria. So, for example, you can see here we have the uses of the verb to be. We have name, nationality, marital status, age, religion, or ethnic group. We have mood and feelings, places, descriptions, relationships, and professions, as Graciela was saying. For example, um, let me see. Um, I'm going to choose someone. Sarita, name, is it permanent or transitory? Can you tell us? Permanent. Why is it permanent? Name. ¿Pero por qué es permanente? Porque ese siempre lo llevamos. Él no lo podemos cambiar. Ah, ni lo podemos dar en pasado. Ah. O sea, ni en futuro. Sino que ese siempre es igual en cualquier oportunidad. Pero imagínese que en los tiempos de antes le ponían el nombre del santo del calendario al, a la persona. Hoy estamos tres. Bueno, sí, ya ¿Tres? no es un nombre tan tan fuera de lo común, pero digamos, déjame ver, quiero ver, quiero ver, I'm just looking at Saturnino, 
Can you imagine someone right now, a baby named Saturnino? Bonifacio también. Ah, Bonifacio, se llame, que se llame. Saturnino Bonifacio de, los, de las tres pencas. How do you think that baby would feel? Va a pensar que no fue nombre, sino que castigo, dice. <risa> ok, so imagine, imagine a Saturnino Bonifacio de las Tres Pencas, que llega ya a los 18 años y decide cambiarse el nombre. ¿Va a seguir siendo ese nombre permanente o va a ser transitorio? Va a ser transitorio, pero acuérdese que no toda la gente está de acuerdo en cambiárselo. Ah, ok. Esa es la cuestión de que no todos, unos aceptan aunque no les guste y así lo mantienen siempre. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok. Yeah, so I want you to think right now in all the uses that you are seeing on your screen and classify them as permanent or transitory, ok? Necesito que me clasifiquen ahorita todos estos usos como algo permanente o transitorio. Hablábamos del nombre, ya les voy a dar la respuesta, ¿ok? So, I'm going to give you a minute. Or, let's do it right now. Mejor vamos así, uno por uno. ¿verdad? Me decían el nombre, ¿es transitorio o permanente? ¿Qué llegamos? Sí, no. Permanent. Permanent. In this case. Yes, okay. Permanent. Ok, excellent. Yes. Aunque ese niño que le pusieron Saturnino Bonifacio de las Tres Pencas se cambia el nombre a... <risa> Les iba a decir uno, pero no, es que aquí ahorita, por ejemplo, se lo cambia a John Smith. En la partida siempre okay. le va a salir, siempre le va a salir antes conocido como, o sea, no se libra de ese nombre aunque lo quiera. So, it is permanent. Excellent. Let's see the next one. Nationality. Is it permanent or transitory? Permanent. 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 What if you get married with someone from Canada or from Brazil? Is it a casa con un canadiense o brasileño? Someone case. Historia. It will be a tra transitory. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Vaya, but the Salvadorian, we have, we can have two nationalities. Because, because, uh, we can keep Salvadorian and we, ha, we can have another one. Ah, By okay. The law, we can do it. Excellent. Yes. Vaya, decía la compañera, o sea, la nacionalidad no la perdemos. O sea, nos podemos casar con alguien de otro país y lo que hacemos es ganar esa nacionalidad, pero siempre vamos a ser salvadoreños. Okay, excellent. The next one, marital status. El estado civil. Transitory? Why? <laughs> Correcto, puedo estar casada Maybe. y me hago divorcio. Ajá. O oh, podemos estar solteras, oh. después casadas, después o divorciados, o enviudamos, o sea, no Correcto. sabemos, ¿verdad? Transitorio. Yes, excellent. Age, la edad. <laughs> permanent. Transitorio. Permanent. No, es permanent Transitor. only in the Transitorio. teacher's case. No, solo para la teacher es permanente, ¿verdad? ¿Cuántos años tengo? 27. Okay. No pasa los 27. No, nunca, nunca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's transitory. It's really, yes. It's really teacher. Yeah, I'm 20 siempre, ¿ok? Si me preguntan mi edad, soy, tengo 20 siempre, ¿ok? Ah, oh, ok. <laughs> ok. <laughs> But as uh, Erika, I think it was, she said it's transitory, ¿ok? Es transitorio, no siempre, aunque quisiéramos, ¿verdad? pero no siempre vamos a tener los 20 siempre, ¿verdad? Correct. Este año tenemos tanto, el siguiente año cumplimos otro, ¿verdad? Y así sucesivamente. Okay, so what about the next one? 20 siempre, por favor. Okay. Okay, the next one. We have religion and ethnic group. La religión y grupo. Transitory. Transitory. Permanent. Why is it 
permanent or why is it transitory? Permanent because we can change where we born. Okay. I, I was born in El Salvador and always going to be Salvadorian. In my okay. religion, it is part of my life, my heart. I can change it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so what Graciela was saying is true. The ethnic group is something that we cannot change. Okay. O sea, la etnia es algo que nosotros no podemos cambiar. Es algo que nos identifica como persona, ¿verdad? Even though I know that religion is something that today you can say I am Christian or I'm Catholic. Uh, probably tomorrow you say I'm going to be a Jehovah Witness or I'm going to be a Muslim, etc. Uh, yes, but at the beginning, if we go back in the it was supposed to be only one. Okay, but you know that People always change many things, but in this case, the religion and ethnic group is something permanent, okay? Es algo permanente. A pesar de las diferencias que hayan hoy en día. Ajá. Teacher, discúlpeme. Teacher, hola. Yes, le escucho. Eh, eh, consulto, consulto. Eh, religion, eth ethnic group, eh, usted dice que es algo... Permanente. Eh, correcto. Y esas personas que de repente eh, pertenecen a diferentes religiones, a una, a una específica religión, y por la moda se cambió a... A otra. No, a una, ¿verdad? Eh, que está de moda en este momento. Pre pregunto, eh, ¿es permanente o es transitoria? Sí. Ahí en ese caso sí entraría como algo transitorio, pero como les comentaba, se supone que al inicio era una sola pero porque alguien no estuvo de acuerdo, se fue con otra religión y así sucesivamente. Es como con una empresa, por decirlo así. Está, digamos que todos nosotros tenemos nuestra empresa. Y viene alguien de repente y diga, yo ya no quiero continuar con ustedes, voy a tener mi propia compañía. ¿Ok? Se va esa persona, tiene su compañía y probablemente haya alguien más, ¿verdad? que diga, ok, yo ya no quiero trabajar con ustedes tampoco y se vaya y haga otra empresa y así sucesivamente. Entonces, ¿la religión cuál va a ser? Ok. Sí, okay. o sea, como dice usted, o sea, a veces uno de moda o por moda o porque es el uh -huh. chico o la chica que a uno le gusta se va a cierta iglesia, ¿verdad? <risa> y después, como se dejaron, regresa a la, a la que estaba anteriormente y así, o sea, pero lo que decía Gracia, la verdad, es algo que uno a veces tiene bien arraigado, lo tiene bien de corazón. Y dice, no, yo no cambio por nada del mundo. Entonces ahí depende de la persona. ¿Ok? Yes. You're welcome. Then we have mood and feelings, los sentimientos y estados de ánimo. Transitory. Transitory. Excellent. It's something transitory. O sea, es transitorio. Ahorita pueden estar durmiéndose, pueden estar cabeceando, pero después termina la clase. Sí, música, dice, fiesta, baile y todo. Ok. O pueden estar, ay, es que yo tengo hambre, tengo sed, pero media vez ustedes han saciado eso, ya están más tranquilos. O sea, es algo transitorio. Ok. What about places? Transitorios. Why? Ahora podemos estar aquí, después podemos estar en otro lado. Excelente. I really like that. Sí, ahorita estamos, bueno, ustedes están en sus casas, mañana van a estar en el trabajo, probablemente a las 6 de la mañana algunos van a estar en el bus, otros van a seguir durmiendo, o sea, es algo transitorio. Descriptions. Las descripciones. Permanente. Why? Porque es lo que lo describe a uno. Y uno casi siempre es la misma persona. Ok. Ok. Thank you. ¿Todos están de acuerdo? ¿Por qué? Eh, porque yo puedo decidir, eh, describir eh, eh, el, el amanecer. Y el amanecer no es el mismo todos los días. Ok. 
la lluvia. Eh, 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 por ejemplo, la puedo escribir a usted. Eh, hoy eh, anda diferente que como normalmente los otros días. Él se ha peinado diferente. Ok. Pero, lo veo desde ese punto de vista, pues. Ok, excelente. Well, on that one, let me tell you that you can have both. En esa puedo decirles que podemos tener ambas, ¿ok? ¿Por qué? Porque lo que decía Sara es cierto, nosotros podemos describir a una persona, pero dentro de unos 10 años, esa persona ya va a haber cambiado. Algo que sucede con la mayoría de hombres, you know that probably today they have hair, but probably in 10 or 15 years, we never know. Ok, en 10, 15 años pueda que ya no tengan cabello, o sea, that's something that may happen. Ok, but if I describe, for example, a table, pero si vengo yo y describo la mesa, o sea, la mesa siempre va a estar del mismo material. For example, the one that I have here, that is from, that is made of wood, it has, what? For legs, for example, o sea, la mesa siempre va a ser la misma. Okay, let's see the next one, relationships. Transitory. Transitory. Are you Transitory. sure? Uh, no, I don't sure. Yeah. And what do so, we mean by relationships? Relaciones. Uh -huh. Maybe, boys, uh, I, I think with my mother, my mother always going to be my mother. Okay. Even she is not here with me. Also, my father, my my children. That I think that it, that doesn't change. Excellent. Okay, when we're talking about relationships, basically we're talking about our relatives or family. Okay, no estamos hablando de si es un novio o novia, etc. No, hablamos de lo que decía Graciela. Uh, for example, my mom is going to be always my mom. I cannot be there walking around and say, hey, that's my ex-mom, because that doesn't exist. Or, ah, my ex-son is living in the USA, for example, because that's something that will always be the same, okay? The relationship is something permanent, okay? And the last one, professions. Always is permanent. Okay, is permanent, why? Because you are always teacher. Okay. Even, uh, even you are in the house, in the work with your baby, you always teacher. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Yes, with professions, as Graciela said, is something permanent. So probably right now I'm a teacher and I can be studying to become a doctor, but my first profession will remain. So I will always be a teacher even if next year I become a doctor and probably in 10 years I become an engineer, but I will always be a teacher, okay? Siempre voy a ser profesora aunque yo decida sacar otras carreras, pero lo que yo estudié primero siempre, siempre lo tengo y nadie me lo puede quitar, okay? Thank you. So that was just a review that I have for you about the verb to be. Now that we know the uses and that you know what are the conjugations of the verb to be, we are going to see the video that we have on the platform about was and where and how to make affirmative and negative sentences, okay? Or is there, if, do you have any questions before I show you the video? <laughs> No. No. Okay. So if there are no questions, I'm going to present the following video. And here we go. Okay. Hi, everyone. In this class, you learn to form positive and negative statements using Additionally, we'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real-life setting. 
Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I was born in Korea. Let's listen and practice. I was born in Korea. Where were you born, Melissa? I was born in Korea. Oh, so you weren't born in the U.S.? No, I came here in 1999. Hmm, you were pretty young. Yes, I was only 17. Did you go to college right away? No, my English wasn't very good, so I took English classes for two years first. Well, your English is really good now. Thanks. Your English is pretty good, too. Yeah, but I was born here. Let's take a look at the statements on this chart now. Statements with the past of B. I was born in Korea. I wasn't born in the U.S. You were pretty young. You weren't very old. She was 17. She wasn't in college. We were born in the same year. We weren't born in the same country. They were in Korea in 1998. They weren't in the U.S. in 1998. Contractions Wasn't equals was not. Weren't equals were not. We can follow this formula to form positive statements in the past with be. Subject plus was or where plus complement. We need to remember the following. For the pronouns you, we, and they, we will use where. And for the pronouns I, he, she, and it, we will use was. Now let's analyze a couple of examples. I was born in Korea. First we need to add a subject, I. Then we will use the verb to be in the past, was. Finally we will include a complement born in Korea. Let's do one more example. We were born in the same year. First we need to add a subject, we. Then we will use the verb to be in the past, where. Finally we will include a complement, born in the same year. Now let's talk about making negative statements in the past with be. We can follow this formula to form negative statements in the past with be. Subject plus wasn't or weren't plus complement. Let's analyze a couple of negative examples. I wasn't born in the US. First we need to add a subject, I. Then we will use the verb to be in the past in its negative form wasn't. I would like to point out that this is the same as saying was not, but we will typically use contractions. Finally, we include a complement, born in the U.S. Let's analyze one more example. They weren't in the U.S. in 1998. First, we need to add the subject they. Then we will use the verb to be in the past in its negative form, weren't. I would like to point out that this is the same as saying were not. But we will typically use contractions. Finally, we include a complement in the U.S. in 1998. Now it's your turn to practice making positive and negative statements in the past would be about yourself, friends, and family. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, so you can see there that we have the affirmative and negative form of the verb to be in simple past. 
Uh, something that will or that you should be aware of is the following. As it says, when you, well, sorry, when we use the pronouns you, we, and they, we use where. And when I talk about I, he, she, and it, I'm going to use was, okay? And the way that I'm going to be making sentences is the following. I'm going to begin with the subject, then with the verb to be, was, or were, and the complement, okay? In the case that we have negative sentences, we're going to have the subject, then the verb to be in its negative form, wasn't or weren't, plus the complement, okay? Is that clear for you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. Okay, excellent. Okay, so for that part, everything is clear, right? Yes, teacher. Okay. Okay, I'm just checking for something here. Give me a few seconds. Okay. Okay, so let's see how much you remember. Okay, we said that when we use the verb to be, I'm going to go back to the presentation that I just showed you. What was the first use of the verb to be? ¿Cuál fue el primer uso del verbo to be? A ver si lo recuerda. Was where? That is the form, yes. But the one that I showed you on the PowerPoint presentation. I, I was born in... Uh, Korea. I was born in Korea, I believe. Okay, yes, yeah, that's the example. I was born in Korea. So if you should classify, if you have to classify this sentence and based on the uses that we already studied, in which one would it be? Según los usos del verbo to be, que acabamos de estar viendo, ¿en qué categoría entra? In this case, uh, <coughs> permanent. 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 Correct. Permanent. Okay, is it permanent? Okay. And what else? The it's uso a que place. Vimos. A place? Or nationality? nationality. Ah. Nationality. Okay. okay, excellent. Yeah, so she should probably say that she was Korean. Okay, because that's her nationality. Okay. Good. Uh, with name, el nombre. Can anyone give me an example using the verb to be? With the yes. name of the person. Yeah, for example, I can say that my name is Aracel, but if I want to talk in simple past, how would that be? Uh huh. Her, her name was Araceli. Okay, her name was Araceli. Why? Because probably she is not longer with us. We don't know, okay? So if we are talking in simple past, uh, we can definitely say, uh, her name was. You can see that in biographies. Eso más que todo lo van a ver en biografías. Su mamá era, su papá se llamaba, etc. Okay? You can also say his name. Sorry. His name was, um, let me see. Uh, Leonardo. For example. Okay? So you can see that here we are using the verb to be in simple past. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, give me an example with age. Was uh, 40 years old. Can you repeat that again, please? Yes. He was 40 years old. Okay, he was 40 years, years old. old. Thank you. Okay. Um, with nationality. Oh, we already have it, sorry. With marital status. He was married. Okay, he was? Married. Thank you. Uh, what about places? He was in my house. Or, yeah, he was in my house. Okay. When you arrived. When you arrived. Okay, excellent. And let's see another one. Professions. He was a famous doctor. Okay. He was a famous doctor. Okay. Excellent. So you can see that here we have written sentences using the verb to be in simple past. However, you can see that we have used only was. Solo hemos usado el was. Vamos ahora con where. Okay. Um, Josué Mauricio, can you give me an example using where? Okay. They, they were? Mm -hmm. Yes. Listen, listen to music. Mm, okay, so they were listening to music. Listening. Okay. Um, there's... There's just something that I need to point out here that since we have listening, this is the past progressive or past continuous, okay? Este es el pasado continuo o pasado progresivo. Tengo lo que es el verbo to be más un verbo en ing, okay? Es algo que más adelante se va a estar estudiando, pero me parece perfecto el ejemplo, okay? Let's see another one. Um, Sarita. You are a singer. You are or you were? Perdón, you were. Ah, okay. You were singers. singers. Excellent. Let's see another one. Um, Beatriz. Hello. Hello, teacher. Disculpe. Okay. Es que estoy haciendo tareas. Ay. Ah. Okay, so can you give us an example using yeah. where? Teacher, we were, we, we were doctors. We were? We were doctors. Okay, we were doctors. Excellent. Okay. Okay, let me see. Kate, can you give me an example, please? Uh, they were playing football. Okay, they were playing football. Oops, sorry. And mixing languages. Just having Spanglish. Okay. Um, Jaime, can you give me another example, please? We were together the weekend. We were together the weekend. Mm, we were together at the la, weekend. Yeah, I'm just thinking we were together last weekend, probably. Oops, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Beatriz, do you have your own example? Uh, we were all friends. 
Okay, we were all friends. Okay, and the last one, let me see. It's going to be for uh, Brian. He was famous. Uh, we are making sentences with where. Oh, where, where, where. Okay. We were invited. We were? Invited. Okay, we were invited. Hasta ahí. To sing. To sing. Okay. We were invited to sing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so basically you can see here that we have affirmative sentences use was, and on this side which we have affirmative sentences using were. However, I was explaining to you that the first one and the fourth sentence are in past progressive. La primera y cuarta oración están en pasado progresivo. ¿Por qué pasado progresivo? Porque tengo lo que es el verbo to be más un verbo en ing. Lo cual está gramaticalmente correcto, ¿verdad? Y es algo que vamos a estar viendo, creería yo, que más adelante. Ok. Um, now, I need you to tell me if this is clear for you or if you have any questions. Yes? I don't have questions. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Teacher, okay. the second sentence is, eh, podría ser el significado del español como ella era o fue coreana. Ella era coreana. Sí, pero, más que todo. El... Ajá. Ajá, pero porque si se supone que no cambió la nacionalidad, ¿cómo es eso? Que eso es lo que me queda un poco como confuso, Teacher. Vaya, este, tenemos que las nacionalidades es algo permanente, pero para que no se me confundan. Yo cuando ya estoy hablando en pasado, probablemente es porque esta persona ya falleció, ¿ok? Y está en la biografía. Entonces, la biografía yo no puedo hablar de esa persona en presente porque sabemos que ya no está. Igualmente a futuro porque ya, ya la línea de tiempo de esa persona ya pasó, ¿verdad? Si nosotros buscamos biografías de algún personaje salvadoreño famoso. La mayoría de ellas, para comenzar, uh, nació en, fue, hizo, y así sucesivamente. O sea, él fue salvadoreño. Por ejemplo, he was salvadoran. Fue salvadoreño. ¿Por qué? Porque esta persona ya probablemente ya no está acá. ¿Ok? Pero sí, es algo que, aunque usted se quiera cambiar, no se puede. Siempre va a ser coreano o salvadoreño, ¿verdad? Aunque se case con una brasileña o una venezolana, alemana, etc. Ok, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Ok. Another question. No, teacher. Ok. Okay. Okay, not a problem. So let's continue. Since we have here affirmative sentences, now we're going to see negative sentences. Okay? So on the first one, we have if we are going to rewrite it in its negative form, how would that be? I wasn't born in Korea. I wasn't born in Korea. Excellent. Okay, I wasn't born in Korea. Uh, the next one. They weren't, they weren't listening to music. Okay, they weren't listening to music. Um, the next sentence. She wasn't she was Korean. Korean. Okay, she wasn't Korean. And the next one. Well, you weren't. You weren't. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Okay, so I think that we are going to reverse this column and then we're going to go to the next one, okay? So we have ah, okay. here. 
Her name wasn't Araceli. Her, okay. her name wasn't Araceli. Yeah. You can say her name wasn't Araceli. Her name was Sara, for example. Okay. The next one. His name wasn't, His name wasn't Leonardo. Leonardo. Okay. Excellent. The next one. She was saying for he or he. 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 Was, ah, okay. he wasn't. He wasn't 40 years old. And the next one? He, he wasn't, wasn't married. He wasn't Excellent. married. And then the next one? He, wa he, wasn't, he wasn't in my house, in my house when, you, when arrived. you arrived. And the last one? He wasn't, he wasn't a famous doctor. doctor. Okay, perfect. Let's see the next column we have here. You were were in Excellent. The next one? We weren't, we weren't doctors. doctors. Okay, the next one? They weren't playing football. They weren't playing football. Okay, perfect. The next one? We, we weren't, weren't together, together last weekend. Okay, the next one? We weren't, we weren't all friends. We weren't all friends. And the last one? We weren't, we weren't invited, invited to sing. To sing. Okay, perfect. Vaya, hasta acá. ¿Está todo claro o tienen alguna pregunta? No, teacher. No, 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 teacher. It's all clear. I really like it. Ok, perfect. Sí, o sea, yo siento que aquí no hay mucho donde perderse. Solamente de saber, ¿verdad? Como les mencionaba al principio, los usos del verbo to be, que probablemente tal vez no los conocían o... O sea, nosotros los usamos, y, pero no, no nos detenemos a veces a pensar, ay, ¿por qué lo estoy usando así? ¿O por qué no está? ¿verdad? Pero ahora ya tienen una idea mejor de lo que son los usos del verbo to be, cómo se van a usar en presente y cómo se van a estar usando también en pasado. Lo que es el was, were, or in its negative form, wasn't, weren't. So, any questions? No, teacher. It's all clear. No teacher. No teacher. No teacher. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so if there are no more questions for today, I just have one for you. Como van con los verbos irregulares? ¿Ya se los aprendieron todos? Ah. Ah. Yeah, remember that you are Almost. learning the, the irregular verbs too. Okay, I have a question with the difference between um, listen and hear and hear. And hear. What is the difference? Okay, when you listen, you're paying attention. Okay, and when you hear, okay. you probably don't don't pay that attention o sea, el listen y el hear la diferencia listen que cuando le dicen escucha y uno pone atención and hear i can hear a noise okay. o sea escucho un ruido me distraigo pero de ahí se me pide yeah. okay that's oh, the difference thanks. okay and the and talk and um uh, what's the other uh, speak, speak. Uh, yes that's it thanks talk uh, and speak Okay, what's the difference? Let's see, anyone? What do you think is the difference between speak and talk? Uh, speak, la realidad, teacher, que es cuando, digamos, uno habla como diferentes idiomas o, o dice algo, pero talk es cuando uno está hablando en el momento, está hablando con alguien. Por okay. ejemplo, yo digo, I can speak English. Okay. I can tell you, I can talk, I'm talking with you right now. Okay. Pienso que la diferencia es eso, ¿no? Ajá. What else can you tell me? Ya vamos a, a, a clarificar eso. But thank you. Uh, I was uh, talking with a friend about the difference. Ajá. Uh -huh. uh, she said that talking is conversation. Talking, for example, I'm talking with you right now. And yes. The speak is, is when two persons are uh, talking between them. 
but I only I hearing, no, not listening. I don't know if it's, if it's mm. right. Okay, so you're not hearing or you're not participating in the conversation? I don't participate. In. Only ah. in my, O sea, que ellos están como platic hablando así y yo no estoy allí. Y conversando cuando estoy yo platicando con alguien. Ok. Ya más o menos así, pero no estoy. Ok, bye. Vamos con lo que había dicho ahí el compañero Alex. Speak. Generalmente lo vamos a utilizar cuando nosotros hablamos lo que es otro idioma. I speak uh, English. I speak Spanish. Spanish. I also speak Portuguese, for example. Um, I can speak for, um, for you, for example, puedo hablar por ustedes en el caso que necesiten algo, ¿verdad? Or I can also speak up, and when we are talking, you talk to someone, okay? Or you can talk back, for example. O sea, y uno de los compañeros lo, de, lo decía. O sea, yo puedo hablar lo que son idiomas. Puedo decir yo hablo inglés, hablo español, también les hablo portugués. Um, I'm learning Italian as well, so I would like to speak Italian one day. Ok. Y el talk generalmente se usa, como decía, o sea, yo, I can be talking to you. Yo puedo estarles hablando a ustedes y ustedes solo me van a estar escuchando. Okay, you're not going to participate on the conversation. Just listen to me. Okay. Okay. Okay, teacher. Um, any other question before I let you go because it's time. No. No, no teacher. No teacher. Okay. So that's going to be all for today. Eso sería todo entonces por el día de ahora. Mañana continuaríamos, ¿verdad? A uh, cualquier duda o consulta, ya saben, ahí estamos. Okay? Same sí, teacher. Okay, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 See you Bye. tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.